do is do what you did. All I got to do is start an agency with the, with the creative people on the agency instead of those pencil pushing stupid motherfuckers, you know. <laughs> <laughs> And I, got, and I got the talent, and June, I, 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 June and Kenny got the copyright, I, I said, we got the talent, you, you got the talent, right? I said, so why? He said, I don't know, it's good, I don't, I don't think you can do it. Well, we were a success in a day. I mean, we announced that we were starting an air agency and we were a success, you know. And, and can, then coming out of our agency in the next two, three, four years, uh, Scotty McCabe Sloves came out of my agency a couple of years later. Scotty was my brother-in-law. Uh, Carl Alley uh, came in with an account, and we couldn't take the account because we it would have uh, it was a bigger account than the one we had, but it was an original account that we had. So I said, he said "What am I going to do with the account with Volvo?" I said, "Start an agency." He started an agency. Uh, Dick Rich left my agency. Started an agency with Mar uh, Wells with Green. So before you knew it, there were three or four creative agencies in 1964 or 5, and that was the creative evolution. The creative evolution is when I squeezed the trigger and I started to take BKL, everybody said, Jesus, a second creative, great creative, creative, creative agency. And then it was a third and a fourth, and that became the revolution, and that changed the world. You know? and it's interesting you'd say that, you know, that Bill Bernbach, you know, felt maybe the slogan was old-fashioned. I mean, well, the, the idea of a slogan was old-fashioned. I said, oh my God, that." Oh, that, that's I mean, real we, wrong, you know. Yeah, we try harder. I mean, that, oh, yeah, that's yeah, yeah, uh, wrong. No, he was, he was, it was very strange. But boy, don't get me wrong, he was a great man. Bill, Bill Burnback, he was a young copywriter in the 40s, 40s, I lose track of time. And uh, he, uh, he, luckiest thing that happened in the world that happened to him is he gets a job at an agency called Weintraub, which was a Jewish agency, which is, you know, cause it's a, waspy goddamn business, but it was a Jewish agency in the sense that the, uh, the, uh, the uh, hierarchy, the, the, uh, the, the owners were, were Jewish. Um, and uh, he gets a job as their copy chief, a pretty young man, and an art director working there, a designer working there, a guy named Paul Rand. You know, Paul Rand is my, my god. I mean, uh, the, the reason he was my god is when I was in high school, I was 14 years old and I was in high school in music and art. The greatest school of learning since uh, since uh, Alexander sat at the feet of uh, Aristotle, um, <laughs> and I'm looking at this work of this guy, and it's obvious he's doing his own work, and nobody's no copyright is, and no no cor no corporation is bullshit. I mean, he's doing terrific work, and I looked at him and I said, God, uh, you know, and it was a guy who been doing great work, and the witty, sharp, uh, interesting, great typographer, et cetera. And, uh, and he was making a living and not taking any crap. You can tell he wasn't taking any crap. So he became my god for that reason. Uh, I, my work never became anything, didn't look anything like his. You know, because my work is very, my work is a, uh, it's an idea on a page, period. You know, I mean. Let it speak for itself. Yeah. There's no designing yeah. other than the fact that if you're a designer, you say, boy, that's a hunk of design. So the idea is in and of itself. That was the creative revolution evolution. There's a lot of, you know, there's one of my favorite terms I heard the other day was a, uh, an authentic replica. I'm trying to figure out what an authentic replica is. <laughs> and they're now saying we're in another creative revolution. Do you follow advertising today? And what are your thoughts where advertising is today? Like, well, I don't follow it. I just kind of rail at it, you know. Watch I watch on TV and I say, and if my wife is in there, I say, what the fuck was that all about? <laughs> <laughs> what was the client, what was the, what was the brand on that? Did you understand that? Honey, I, maybe, I, maybe I live in another world. Maybe I'm 90, 100 years old, but I don't understand what's going on. I don't get it. <coughs> that ain't advertising. You know, I mean, I, I my, it, it's like nobody's asking for the sale. In many of my commercials, I would, I would do like before I did. I want my MTV. It was part of it. I did. I want my Mabel. Um In fact, when I was when I was showing the MTV guys, the I want my MTV idea. I said, hey, when you guys, remember when you guys were kids and you saw a commercial 
when you were five, six years old, you saw a commercial, I want my maple. It was, it was Mickey Mantle, I had the first, six greatest athletes in America, still in, in the history of America. Yeah, Mickey Mantle picked his whole back. He said, he on his face, he said, I want my maple. He cuts to a, a Will Chamberlain, Will Chamberlain, I want my maple. You know, uh, cuts to, uh, you know, to, uh, you know, set, uh, Johnny Unitas, great quarterback. Johnny Unitas, I want my maple. Look for, look for, look for uh, ad campaigns that have two mn mnemonics, you know, MN, you know, from the word, from the, from the Moses, which is the Greek word. A word mnemonic, you know, I, I, want my M I want my MTV, and a visual mnemonic, <clears throat> I want my MTV. You'll really find one, find it, but if you can get the two together, you got, you got memorability. Nobody will ever forget it, you know. Um, uh, so, uh, where the hell was I?